Hello and welcome to theCUBE's special presentation of Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. I'm John Furrier, your, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great conversation talking about the future of the infrastructure of Web3 all around domains, non-fungible tokens, and more. Two great guests, Charlie Brooks with business development of Unstoppable Domains and Michael Williams, product leader and advisor with Unstoppable Domains. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on theCUBE Partner Showcase with Unstoppable Domains. Thanks John, excited to be here. So I love what you guys are doing. Congratulations on all your success. You guys are on the leading edge of what is a major infrastructure shift, Web3 it's being called, but people who have been doing this for a while know that you see the blockchain, you see decentralization, you see immutability, all these future smart contracts. All the decentralized applications are now hitting the scene and NFTs are super hot as, as, as you can imagine, you guys are in the middle of it. So you guys are in, in, in the sweet spot of what I call the pragmatic pioneers. You guys are to building solutions that are making a difference, like single sign-on, you have the login product. Let's get into it. What is the path to a digital identity beyond the web? Because we know what web identity is, but now that the web is kind of being abstracted away by this new web three layer, what is digital identity? Yeah, uh, I can take that one. So I think what we're really seeing is this transition away from uh, a purely physical identity, where your digital or where your where your online identity is really just a reflection of the um, the parts of your physical identity, where you live, uh, where you go to school, all of these things. And we're really seeing this world emerge where your online identity becomes much more of a primary. So uh, if you have a way that you represent yourself in the online world, whether that's an Instagram account or TikTok or email address or username. Uh, all of these things together make up your digital identity. So congrats if you have any of those things, you already have one. <laughs> yeah, we see that all the time with Linktree. People put their Linktree out there and it's got the zillion handles here. We all have GitHub to Instagram. I mean, everyone's got like zillion identities. Is that a problem or an opportunity? I think it's just a reality. Um, the fact is our, our identities are spread across all of these different services and, and platforms that we use. Uh, the problem with something like Linktree is that it is owned by Linktree. You know, if I uh, won the lottery, purchased Linktree, and decided I wanted to change your personal website, John, I could easily do that. Um, moving to the, the kind of architecture that we have, an NFT architecture, uh, changes that significantly. It puts a lot of power back in the hands of the people who actually own those identities. You know, I do a lot of CUBE showcases with folks around talking about machine learning and AI. And the number one conversation that they bring up, the number one issue is data. And they say when data is siloed and, and protected and owned, it is not optimized for machine learning. So I can almost imagine as you bring NFTs to the digital identity, you mentioned you don't own your identity if someone else is managing the service like Linktree. This is, this is a cultural shift This is and, and a infrastructure software shift at the same time. Can you guys expand more about what you guys are doing with the NFT and Unstoppable Domains with respect to that digital identity? Because is that power shifting to the users now? And how does that compare to what's out there today? Sure, I think so. Um, our domains are NFTs, so they are ERC721 tokens. And if you think about um, in the past, kind of web two identities are controlled by the platforms that we use, Twitter, Facebook, whatnot, there's a really a lack of data portability there. Um, our accounts and data live on their servers, they can be deleted at any time. So using an NFT to anchor your digital identity really gives you full control um, over your identity. You can't, it can't be deleted, it can't be revoked or edited or changed without your permission. Um, and really even better, the information you store on your NFT domain can be plugged into the services you use so that you never have to enter the same data twice. So when you go from platform to platform, everything can be tied to your existing domain. You're not going to a new site, kind of entering their ecosystem and providing all this information time and time again, and not really having a clear understanding of how your data is being used and where it's being stored. So the innovation here is the NFT is your identity. Um, and, and a non-fungible token NFT is different than say a fungible token. So for the folks out there that's trying to follow the bouncing ball, Michael, what's the difference between an NFT and a fungible token and how does and why is that important for identity? Yeah, uh, my favorite metaphor here is is baseball cards uh, versus like dollar bills. So a dollar bill is fungible. If I have a dollar and you have a dollar, we can trade dollars, and none of us is richer or poorer. 
Uh, if I have a Babe Ruth and you have a Hank Aaron and we swap baseball cards, like we have we have changed something fundamental. So the the important thing about NFTs is that they are non fungible. So if I have a domain and you have a domain, like I have that identity and you have that identity, they are unique. They're independent. They're owned um, by each one of us, and, and we can't kind of swap them interchangeably. And that's why you're seeing NFTs hot with art and artists because it's like a property. It's a property issue, not so much absolutely interchangeable yeah. or divisible kind of asset. No, yep, it is uh, it is ownership rights in digital form. Yes. All right. So now let's get into what it, the the identity piece. I think find that interesting because if I have something that's an NFT, it's non fungible. It's unique to me. It's property, my property, my login. This sounds compelling. So how does login work with the NFT? Can you guys take us through that? that um, architecture, what does it do, how does it work, and what's the benefit? Sure, uh, so the way our login product works is it effectively uses your NFT domain, so michael.crypto, for example, uh, as the authentication piece of a, of a login session. So basically when I, when I go and I try to log in with my domain, I type in michael.crypto, I sign it with my wallet, which cryptographically proves that I am this human, this is me, uh, I have the rights to log in. And then when I do so, uh, I have the ability to share certain parts of my identity information with the applications that I use. Uh, so it really blends the, the best of the, the ease of use from web two, of just a standard like login with Gmail SSO experience with all of the security and privacy benefits of web three. How important is single sign on because I mean, right now people are used to like seeing things like log in with your GitHub handle or LinkedIn or, you know, Google, Apple. I mean, you're seeing people offering login. Okay, what's the difference here from those solutions and why does it make sense for the user? Sure, yeah, the big difference is um, what we're building is really user first. So if you think about um, traditional SSOs, you are the product when you use their product, they're selling your data, and, you know, they're tracking everything you do. Um, login with Unstoppable handles not only authentication, but data sharing as well. So when you log in, a domain or owner can choose to share aspects of their online identity, such as first name, preferred language, profile picture, um, location. So this is a user controlled way of using a sign on where they are permissioning these different pieces of their identity. Um, and really apps can use this information to enable new experiences such as um, for example, website might automatically enable high contrast mode for someone visually impaired. Um, it could pre-populate your friends from a, a decentralized social graph. So what we're doing is taking the best parts of web two SSO and combining them with the best parts of web three. So no more losing your password, entering in the same data hundreds of times, you know, depending on other services, to keep your information safe. Um, login with Unstoppable really puts you in complete control of your data. And, you know, a big part of that is, um, you're not going to have 80 plus usernames and passwords anymore. You know, we have these tools like password managers that exist to um, kind of put a bandaid on this issue, but it's not really a long-term solution. Um, so what we're building is, is really seamless onboarding where everything can be tied to your domain so that you can navigate to different apps um, in a much more seamless way. Michael, I got to get your thoughts on this because on the product side, it's interesting. My mind's kind of connecting some dots. If I have, first of all, great convenience to reduce all those logins, right? So, you know, check there, little pain, pain reduction. But when you think about what's different, I can now broker my data as well as log in. So let's just say, hypothetically, I'm cruising around um, some D apps and I'm you know, doing things and earning reputation or attention or points or whatever tokens, utility tokens there could be a way for me to control what I own. I'm the product, I own the data. Is that kind of where this is going? I think it's definitely a direction it could go. Uh, say for example, if I'm a e-commerce platform and I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to uh, place a new billboard, you know, one of the things that I could request from a user is their address. I can figure out where they live, what city they're in, that will help inform the, uh, the decision that I need to make as a business. And in return, maybe I give that person a dollar off their purchase, right? Like we can we can start to build a stronger relationship between the applications that people use and the people that use them and try to optimize that whole experience and try to just transfer information back and forth to, to make everyone's lives better. What's the roadmap on the business side, Charlie, when you see companies uh, kind of adopting it, 
They're probably taking baby steps. They're crawling before they walk. They're walking before they run. I mean, I can see decentralized applications in the future, whether it's FinTech or whatever, having new kinds of marketplaces that take advantage of the paradigm where the, the script flips to the user f first. Okay, so I see that. How do people get started now? What are some of the success momentum points that you're seeing companies do now with Unstoppable? Sure, so a lot of Web3 apps are very sensitive about um, respecting the, the um, information that their users are providing, right? So what we're doing is um, offering different ways for apps to get in touch with their users in a way that is user controlled. So um, an example there is that a lot of Web3 companies will use Wallet Connect to allow users to log in using a wallet address. An issue there is that one person can have hundreds of wallet addresses and it's impossible for the app to understand that. So what we do is we use login, we attach um, an email address, some other pieces to a wallet address so that we can identify who a unique user is. And the app is able to collect that information. Um, they don't have to deal with passwords or PII storage. Um, they have access to a huge amount of new data for an improved UX. Um, it's really simple to implement and maintain as well. So um, one example there is if you are um, a DeFi platform and you want to reward your users for coming to their site for the first time, now that they can identify a unique user, they can drop a token into that user's wallet, um, all because they're able to identify that user as unique. So they have a better way of understanding their customers. Um, they enable their customers to share data. Um, a lot of these companies will ask users to follow them on Twitter or Discord when they need to provide updates or um, you know bug bounties, all these different things. And Login with Unstoppable lets them permission email addresses so they can collect emails if they want to do a newsletter. Um, and instead of sort of harvesting data from elsewhere and kind of forcing people to join this newsletter program, um, it's all user controlled. So each user saying, yes, you can use my email for your newsletter. You know, I'm supporting your project, want to be um, kept up to date with bugs or bounties or rewards programs. Um, so really it's just kind of a, a better way for users to, to share the data that they're willing to with dApps um, and dApps can use it to, to create all sorts of incentives um, and really just kind of understand their users um, on, a, on a different level. How is the development, uh, Michael, going on the, on the smart contract side of the business? You know, Ethereum has always been heralded as being very developer focused. Um, there's been great innovations, but you still got you know, gas fees out there. You still got to do some things. How is the development environment? How are the applications coming? Because uh, I can see the really, I can see the flywheel kicking in as the developer front gets more streamlined, more efficient. And now you got the identity piece nailed down. I just see a lot of kind of dominoes falling at the same time. What's the status on the dev side? What's your sure. um The fascinating thing about crypto is how quickly it changes. You know, when I when I joined, um, Ethereum was pretty reasonable still for transactions. It was, it was very cheap to get things done, very fast. Uh, we look at last summer that things went completely out of control. This is a big reason that uh, Unstoppable for a long time has been working on a layer two. You know, we've moved over to the Polygon as our primary source of record, which is built on top of Ethereum, of course. I think saved um, well over a hundred million dollars in gas fees for our users. You know, we're constantly keeping an eye on new technologies that are emerging, weighing how we can incorporate those things uh, and, and really where this industry is going to take us. You know, in many ways we are, uh, are just as much passengers as the other people uh, floating around the ecosystem as well. Yeah, it's, it's certainly getting faster every day. I'm seeing a huge uptake on Ethereum. And I heard a stat that most people at the University of California, Berkeley, 30% of the computer science students are dropping out to join Web3 companies. Wow. This goes to show you this cultural shift and you're going to see a lot more companies getting involved. So I got to ask you, Charlie, on the biz dev front, how are companies getting started? What's the playbook? Are they putting their toe in the water? Are they jumping in full throttle? What's, sure. what's, the, what's the roadmap? What's the best practice for people to get started with Unstoppable? Absolutely. Um, you know, we're lucky that we get a lot of inbound interest from companies Web2 and Web3 because they first want to secure their domains and we do a ton of work on the back end to protect trademark domains. We want to avoid squatting as much as possible. Um, you know, we don't think that's the spirit of, of Web3 at all and certainly not what the original um, intention of the internet was. So a fair amount of companies will reach out to, out to us to get their domain and then we can have a longer conversation about some of the other integrations and ways we can collaborate. Um, so certainly visiting our website, unstoppabledomains.com is a great starting point. Uh, we have an app submission page where 
Um, apps can reach out to us, even request a grant. We have a grant pro a program to help developers get started, um, provide them some resources to, to work with us and integrate some of our technology. Um, we have great documentation as well on the site, so you can read all about um, what it takes to resolve domains if you're a wallet or an, an exchange, uh, as well as what it takes to integrate login with Unstoppable, um, which is actually a super easy integration as well, which we're, we're really excited about. Um, so yeah, I'd say check out the website, apply for a grant if you think you're a fit there. Um, then of course, people can always reach out to me directly um, on Twitter, on Telegram, email. Um, we're very reachable and, and we're always happy to chat with projects and, and learn more about what they're doing. What's the coolest thing you've seen going on, Charlie, with your partners right now? What's, uh, what's, the, what's the number one use case that's cool that people are jumping on right now to get in and get some, some, you know, some success out of the gate? Yeah, maybe um, maybe GameFi kind of um, play to earn is huge. It's blowing up and, and the gaming community is really passionate, vibrant, um, just expanding like crazy. Um, same with DeFi, there's all this cool new stuff you can do with DeFi where no matter um, you know, how many, how, how big your kind of portfolio is, you're, you're able to stake and use all these interesting tools to kind of grow your book. Um, so it's super exciting to see and talk to all these projects and you know, there's certainly um, kind of an energy in the community where everyone wants to onboard the general public to Web3, right? So we're all working on these cool projects, but we need everyone to come over from Web2, kind of understand the advantages of DeFi, of GameFi, um, of having an NFT domain. So uh, I'm lucky that I'm kind of one of the first layers there of, of meeting new projects um, and kind of helping them get access to more users um, so that they can grow along with us. Yeah, I remember the early days of Bitcoin and Ethereum, we were giving it away. To give the, the the community mantra was give a give a bitcoin to someone that was like right. when it was a you can actually give a bitcoin to someone um well, what's the what's the word of mouth or organic viral i won't say growth hack because that's got negative connotations but what's the community's way of uh putting forth the mission for unstoppable is it just more domains you guys have any programs got going on is it give it away obviously you can get domains on your site but what's the um What's the way to get people ingratiated in and getting comfortable? Yeah, so much of what we do is really to solve that, uh, to solve that question, answer that question. Like, uh, we spend a ton of time and energy just on education, and whether that's specifically around domains or just general Web three. Uh, we have a, a podcast which is pretty exceptional, which talks to Web three leaders from across the space and makes uh, the, the projects that they're working on more accessible. I think we passed over 100 episodes not too long ago. Um, there's a, a ton of stuff that we do that other people do. Uh, if anyone has questions, I'm happy to talk about uh, resources, of course. <laughs> yeah, the pod, I think you guys are up to 117, but um, that's a deep dive. The guys go deep on the podcast. So that's you know, where you go in. Um, what else is new on digital identity? Where do you guys see the future going now that you get the baseline identity with the NFT? Makes a lot of sense, great innovation, good logic, makes sense, solid technically. What's next? Yeah, uh, I think this really boils down to the way that the internet has grown doesn't really feel like the way that the internet should be. Like our data shouldn't live in these walled gardens controlled by these large companies. Like ultimately people should be responsible for their own identities. They should have control over the things that they do online, the data that's shared, the benefit of that data. And so the world that we are working towards is very much that where we are giving people the ability to be uh, paid for sharing their data with companies. Uh, we're giving applications the ability to request information from the people that use those applications to improve their experience. Uh, we're really just trying to make connections across the ecosystem through these products to enable a better experience for everyone. So whether that's uh, the, the use cases that I mentioned already, or maybe um, viewing reviews on something like Yelp or Amazon that just confirm that the person that you are uh, you're looking at is actually a real person, not some bot that's been paid to, uh, yeah. to load a review. Like the, the interesting thing about these products is they're so universally applplicable, applicable. There are so many uh, different ways that we can try to plug them in. So the we bots are, is a great uh, example. It's double-edged sword. You can have a, a, a metaverse image and, and have, you know, pre-programmed conversations with, with, you know, liquid audio and video application, you know, or it's a real person. How do you know the difference? You know, these are going to be questions, you know, around, yeah. around who solves that problem. Now there's time for bots and there's a time not for bots. We all know 
what happens when you get into the, uh, you know, the game of manipulation, but also it can be helpful. This is where you, you got to be smart and identity is critical in this future. Charlie, what's your reaction to the future of digital identity? I mean, so much to look at here on the trajectory. Yeah, um, you know, I think a big part of it is data portability, right? If you go to a site like Instagram, you're giving them all this content that's very personal to you and, and you can't just pack up and leave Instagram. So we want a future where um, most of these apps are just kind of a front end and you can navigate from one to the other and bring your data with you and not be beholden to um, the companies that operate centralized servers. So um, I think data portability is huge and it's going to open up a lot of doors. And, and just going back to that thought on um, kind of cleaning up web two for a better web three, when I think about the Amazons, the Elps, the Yelps of the world, there are all these bots or all these awful fake reviews. Um, there's a lot of gamification happening that is really just creating a lot of noise. Um, and I want to bring kind of transparency back to the internet where when you see a review, you should know that that's a real human. Um, and blockchain technology is enabling us to do that. And certainly NFT domains are going to play a huge part of that. Um, so I think that having an experience where you know and trust the people that you're interacting with is going to be really powerful and just a better experience for everyone. Um, and there's a lot of ramifications with that. You know, politically speaking, we've we've all seen all the issues with kind of attacking communities and using bots and fake accounts to kind of um, hit people's pain points. Is um, It's kind of sad and, and certainly um, not something that we want to see continue happening. So whatever we can do to kind of give people their digital identity and, and help people understand that this is a real person on the other end, um, I think is huge for, for the future of the internet and really for society as well. That's a great uh, call out there, Charlie, cleaning up the mess of web 2.0. Uh, web 2, actually I was, it was 2.0 technically, now web 3 is no, no point zero in it. But, but um, I saw on, or listened to the podcast uh, with Matt, um, this recent one, he had a great uh, metaphor that went back to when I was growing up in the internet, you had IP addresses, right? And the mess there was, it was you couldn't find what you want to look, no one could remember what to type in. Because uh, you could type in IP addresses in the browser back then. And then DNS came out and then keywords, that's web. Okay, now that mess now is fraud, misinformation, bot manipulation, deep fakes, many other kind of unwanted kind of time to innovate. And every year, every time you had these inflection points, there'd be an abstraction on top of it. So similar thing happening here, is that how you guys see it too? Yeah, I think we're going back to some of the foundational architecture of the internet, DNS and really bringing that forward about 30, 40 years in terms of technology. Uh, so loading in some more cryptography and some other fancy things to help uh, patch some of those issues from uh, the previous versions of the web. Yeah, awesome. Well guys, thanks so much for coming on. In the spirit of our of TikTok, you normally summarize this. Can you guys give us a quick TikTok moment, short comment on you know, where this is all going? Where is login, single sign on mean? And what should people do to take uh, steps to secure their digital identity? Sure, um, I'll jump in here. So um, it's time for people to secure their digital identity. The great first step is going on several domains and getting an NFT domain. Um, you know, you can control your data. You can do a lot of cool different things with your domain, including hosting your own website that you own forever and no one can take it away from you. Um, I would certainly recommend that people join our Discord, Telegram communities, check out our podcast. It's really great, especially if you're new to Crypto Web3. Um, you know, we do a great job of sort of explaining all the basic concepts and expanding on them. Um, so yeah, I'd say, you know, the time is now to, to get your digital identity and start embracing Web3 because um, it's really uh, exploding right now. And there's just so many incredible advantages, um, especially for the user. Michael, what's your take? I mean, I, I could not have said it better myself. <laughs> like we always say, if you're not on the next wave, you're driftwood. And this is a big wave that's happening. It's pretty clear, guys, it's, it's there. It's happening now. And again, very pragmatic implementations of solving problems, the sign on, the app integration. Congratulations. And uh, we got our cube domain too, by the way. So we're, we're I think Excellent. we're good, you know? So we got to put it to use, appreciate it. Charlie, Michael, thanks for coming on and sharing the update. It's a pleasure. Okay, this is theCUBE with Unstoppable Domains Partner Showcase. I'm John Furrier, your host. Got a lot of other great interviews. Check them out. We're going to continue our coverage and continue on with this great showcase. Thanks for watching.